Hey, King J, what we tell him? Tell him. Back on. Back on. Back on. Back on. What's going on, everyone? It's your boy King J, reporting from the Tekka World Tour finals in Thailand, and we're here with Kaduko. You know, good to see you again. Good to see you. So, you know, yesterday you done in, uh, the last chance qualifier. How do you feel about your performance in the last chance qualifier, and how do you feel about the competition? Oh, but the last chance qualifier, uh, I wasn't too pleased with my performance. Um, it was really difficult. Uh, every single pool, there were talented players just uh, out the gate. It wasn't like we, you know, you play a couple, like, players that are a little bit above average, then like in top 16 you play like players at your level or no, like it was automatically like you have to be ready and on it right then and there and um, it was a little stressful. Um, I learned a bit more about um, how I deal with adjusting in those kinds of situations. Um, even though I was disappointed, I learned a lot from uh, all the people that I faced. Um, the LCQ in general, this compared to last year, it was, this is way harder this year. Um, because, like I said, the pools had uh, high-level players in each one. Like there were like three to four in each pool. They so were stacked. It was very stacked. So yeah. it was a bloodbath. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it was great to watch the matches. Um, I would like to not have, have to do that next year. I don't. I want to avoid it. Because. <laughs> yeah. um, all these uh, like 250 something people fighting for one spot compared to me having like a chance at like 19 spots one of the 19 spots my probability goes up higher if i do more of the work like the whole year compared to this one moment so um yeah. i learned a lot played a lot of great players watched a lot of good matches learned a lot uh, in general yeah but uh yeah that's what i think about the lcq nice one so you know for the people that don't know about you can you tell me a bit about your Tekken background? Where did you hear about the offline competitive Tekken scene? Where did I hear about the offline? Yeah, so when, you know when you first started you know, competing and stuff, where did you hear about like, the Tekken offline scene? It might sound funny, but I learned about my like, Chicago slash Illinois offline scene from um, Facebook because they had a page for like offline meetups. And I remember I come home from school because I chose to go to a community college at home and I'm like, I need to play some Tekken offline, man. I love the game. So I asked, I, I typed in like Tekken in like Illinois and um, I got that page and then I met a lot of my friends to it so it's because of Facebook honestly and one of my friends who recommended like uh, the page itself um, yeah I, I started competing in Tekken Tag Tournament too when okay. I was 19 oh nice so you didn't you play did you play casually like Tekken 6 and the other games before yeah I casually played all of the Tekkens like all of them one two um, six and then I competed in Tag for at least like like uh, two years, two yeah. three years, I think. Okay, nice. So you know, we've got Tekken Seven Season Three. Tell me your thoughts about Season Three and the, the new changes and the upgrades. Do you like them or you don't like them? Um, for my character specifically, I enjoy the changes in Season Three. Elisa having uh, three two as like a, I think it's like a twelve frame punish. The the fly low or. Uh, uh, with chainsaws is new, it's really good. Um, her back 4-4 four, four whip punisher, like that is a natural combo that's really good. She needed that. Yeah. You never have to worry much about the range. Um, it's kind of just like, uh, she needed those things to really round her out. She was already really good, but they, they just keep making her better. So I have no complaints about that. Um, everybody else seems fine. Season three, though, um, some of the interactions the characters have, like their animations are a little wonky, like I'm seeing today. Yeah. And that's a little puzzling, but like overall season three, everybody's combos got buffed. Uh, I think most of the characters have combos that, you know, it's like uh, damage balancing. Yeah. So it's it's pretty good. Nakuma got that 25% uh, meter gain thing. So still, not, still not enough. Not enough, no. But we're, we're working it out, you know. But we'll, we'll save that for later. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, overall, I do enjoy season three because I mean, my, it's like Christmas for my characters. No, for sure. So, being one of the few Tekken female players, do you face any challenges at all? Mm. Amongst, um, amongst my uh, my male peers, like like the ones that I train with, I don't really I don't face adversity in yeah. that sense. But like when I'm dealing with like the fighting game community as a whole. Yeah. There have been some problems with that, um, especially since I'm black. <laughs> yeah. It's even it's it's more so a problem I think, because the way that the community can sometimes 
uh, portray black women is just, it's, it's rather disrespectful. They see us as masculine sometimes, uh, that we're less credible of like fighting game players and things like that. I'm always used as the example of like the opposite of that, but it's the fact that I hear it, yeah. I see it, and there's discrimination against us. Um, there's a lot of praising of women that look lighter. Yeah. So that it's a little different for women of color um, in that sense. Um, so I, I have dealt with that. I don't as much anymore. Um, I surround myself with people like my training partners and just people who respect me and, you know, genuinely care about my success and me theirs. So, um, you know, though there have been some challenges, it's, you know, the things that I, I fought against and spoken up about because I, injustice in regards to my gender should not be a thing at all. It, um, if I'm a competitor, I'm a competitor. It, I, I'm your equal. That's what matters. 100% and I wouldn't even worry about any of that stuff you're, you've you've put your name out there to a lot of people you know you've competed in such big tournaments you've com you've taken down a lot of big names so any of those stuff the negative stuff keep that out because you know just, it's all about positivity and keeping the tunnel vision that's my message I'm sorry to kind of get out of the interview but yeah let's get back into the interview um, how come you choose Elisa like let's let's talk about that because there's so there's there's so many characters on the screen and you know it's Alyssa just seems to be the character I see every time when you play you don't have you know sometimes you see other people like for example Nii chooses different characters you see JDCR all these big top names choose different characters so with you it, you just choose Alyssa from what I have seen for so many times that I've you know we've been in the same tournament I'm looking I'm like oh you're Alyssa so why is that is there a personal reason to why you just stick to Alyssa and why you've chosen Alyssa hmm photo bomb <laughs> I, show, I, um, I choose Elisa because I feel like uh, when it comes to tournament play, she's more well-rounded. Yeah. Uh, her tools, she can just deal with a lot more. Yeah. Uh, I have Ling Xiaoyu. Like, Ling Xiaoyu is also one of my other main characters, but I don't really use her in tournament. I probably should more, but Ling has this problem where she struggles with um, opponents who turtle, who uh, backdash, she, uh, stay outside of her uh, range a lot, yeah. and personally, I want a character who can deal with that, who has the range to kind of come in and uh, deal with opponents who like to uh, keep distance between me and them. Um, Ling has to be really risky. Sometimes I don't want to be, yeah. especially when like there's um, you know, really like important like round closing situations. I don't want to have to like try and come in on that person. Yeah. Um, as Link, so as Elisa, I feel like even being more clutch is easier with her, and it's like um, I feel like I should counterpick more with Link, but like I said, I, I have been trying to find like the spots of how and where I should use her because I still feel like Elisa just really covers more matchups and play styles in general, and has given me success in that way. Do you find any other characters that you, you know, like feel is somewhat an interest to you? Oh yeah, uh, I play multiple characters as yeah. practice, but I've really enjoyed, uh, for the past couple months I use Claudia. Okay, <laughs> but, uh, Sh uh, Shadow, Shadow Influence, <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, we play him very differently, but I learned a lot from him just by watching, and yeah. I'm like, wow, he fits my play style, oh my god! And But, but the thing was, it's uh, Claudio, and a lot of people like my Asuka, which is weird because, you know, at some point when you, you get to a certain level, uh, of gameplay, you can you can play everybody, you know, yeah. and you know you're not you're not gonna be like me and play them all well, but you know it's the fact that you know how do I say, guys, come on, like I I'm not that good with her, but if if I if I work with her a little bit, it needs to be Claudio or Asuka. All right, nice. So what's your plans for 2020? Because you know I know that you're sponsored. Actually, let's get into that. How did the sponsor between you and Equinox happen? Uh, how does it work? How, how, how did it happen? Like you know how did you like I just you know, outside looking in, I don't know the story, but I, I want to know the story of how it happened. Oh, okay, so <laughs> how it happened was I graduated college. e had happened in February. College graduation was May. Um, I pretty much said, uh, I was like, um, I made a tweet saying, hey, yeah, I'm a free agent. I left my team. And um, Equinox approached me, I think in like, like in the fall and um they were like hey you know we were wondering if you're interested in like a sponsorship with us and i was like i didn't i honestly didn't think i was going to get approached at all um because i i only go i was only going to three three to four tournaments a year yeah. at the time so it was like 
Yeah, I didn't really make much of a name for that. Even though Ely did happen, it was like, that was one thing. And, you know, I had only been to like three tournaments a year, like I said. So, um, but I was like, this is a great opportunity for me to experience more play styles and be very competitive. If this is what I want, I, I mean, maybe it's worth look, looking into. I asked Tasty Steve, he said they're great. Uh, I asked Joey, because he was on their team uh, at the time, he still is. Um, he said they're great. And so, I said okay, and I made the chance. Uh, I, mean, I took the chance to go and uh, compete with them. And my whole year has changed. My whole life has changed because of the opportunities they've given me um, from the end of 2018 to now. And uh, so, like my placements, the people I've beaten, the experience I've gotten, the skill I've achieved, um, the improvement—it's all because of them investing in me. So that's that's how it happened. Ah, excellent. So, what's your plan for 2020? Hmm. My plan for 2020, I ideally, I would like to be in the top 19 spots, one of them, because, um, you know, the LCQ, it's really tough, you know. <laughs> yeah. well, I'm, I'm used to tough, it's not the problem, it's just, I want to deal with the tough all year then, and you know, in bits and pieces, not just all in one concentration of one tournament, and, and you know. It's you a know, lot of pressure, isn't it? It's a lot of pressure, yeah. like a lot, and yeah. um, I already have enough pressure when it comes to competing as is, so. <laughs> um, but ideally that's what I want is to get one of the 19 spots because I believe in myself and many other people believe in me and I know I can do that um, I just really need to be strategic and study a bit more um, I also want to expand my brand a bit more um, spread my message kind of get more um, women of color into the space feel more comfortable with the, uh, so they feel more comfortable like competing and things like that mm -hmm. um, definitely being more of a public speaker and teaching more like uh, students and kids about like esports just so you know their parents don't feel as uh concerned about them you know joining or anything like that you know so yeah. i have a couple of things in the works with that so you know just expanding though next year expanding and competing hard and getting that 19th spot and uh, growing as a person and a player too I, I definitely respect what you're doing and you know really really appreciate you doing everything that you're doing and you know best of luck for 2000 and well we do what do we say 2020 or do we say 2020 all right, say 2020. 20, all right we'll say 20, yeah 2020 all right so best of luck for 2020 and yeah i'll see you around take it easy thank you